The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the uh, weekly Niantic Youth Group. Uh, today is the 19th of February, 2018. Uh, myself and John are here. And um, yes, basically, um, hello. <laughs> Uh, as always, we'll uh, we'll start with some updates. Uh, if you have any ideas or questions and so on and so forth, then raise your hand. We'll get the mics open and we'll uh, we'll work through stuff uh, accordingly. Um, now, the first point that uh, on the updates I do want to mention are basically uh, various updates that have one been released and two are uh, in 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 progress now so the first one is the ftp class from the part of the chilcat wrapper so uh i know bill is with us so bill i'm just going to quickly open your mic i think you you with us are you there bill good morning good morning how are you doing great very good um yes basically just let me bring this into play so you can see um, I've not had a chance to actually release it, but rather than say it's there, uh, you know, it's coming, it's coming, I did actually want to show you the actual content. It is all of the methods you can see, it's quite, um, it's quite substantial. All the methods are there, uh, need to tidy up, just line things up and so on and so forth. Uh, but yes, basically, uh, it's, it's within touching distance now, I'm glad to report. Do apologize uh, for the delay. Uh, it's caught oh, no a little off guard, but uh, but yes, basically there's um you know uh, a tidy up for the source code, but yeah, I, I, I like to prove what I say, and you can see there's um there's quite a lot to it, and that's just the FTP, um and that's not the getters and setters for the properties, but of course with any of the actual getters and setters, you can just use the standard get property and set property, so you you you've got access to all of the actual uh, the FTP class. So, uh, so yeah, you you will get that. I'll send you the email as soon as it's done, and obviously everybody else who's interested in the the FTP part of it. But yes, it um it is a like I say, it's it's quite large. I'll I'll give them that. They uh I think they've, I think they've covered everything. Um, but yes, yeah, that that is real detailed. <laughs> it, it, it it is. Believe me, uh, and there's still some like there. You can see that's just a standard um. Uh, command to do and so on for the uh, the asynchronous. So, but we are within touching distance. So I'm, I'm glad to report uh, on that. Now that will be one part of the Chilcat update. Uh, there are other parts of the Chilcat. Uh, the, the next update will not only include that; it will include a, a new task um, class, which um, you'll get the, the beta of the. FTP before and because you've waited long enough for it, so don't think you'll the, the other will hold you off. Um, but one of the things we've been asked for, uh, a couple of users now, to be fair, and we are um, very close on it, is the interface to QuickBooks Online. Don't know if everybody uses that, but this will come along with the normal Chilcat um, uh, wrapper template. So we are progressing well on that. Uh, ignore that, that's just um, the zero stuff which I pinched. But basically, um, I can see from here that, oh no, I won't actually press it now because it's got uh, actual private details in there. But um, there will be a new task class for QuickBooks Online, lets you connect to it, uses OAuth 2. So basically, it will open up um, a browser for you to be able to give um, authority for um, your, your application to be able to access the data and then obviously want to keep itself uh, the token refreshed and so on because each token for QuickBooks Online only lasts for 60 minutes. Um, they previously allowed for a different interface into QuickBooks but uh, as of July last year you have to go down OAuth 2 so anybody wanting to do the interface now our hands are tied you will have to go down this process but at least the task class will include it. And there's also some updates to the other parts of the um, the uh, Chilcat wrapper for the CSV and the OAuth 2. The OAuth 2 class is now fully wrapped as well because it was needed for the QuickBooks. So, so basically, there's been uh, steps in all of the class. Uh, in, in not, not all, sorry, that's a quite a bold statement, but in lots of the parts of the Chilcat wrapper. So, um, so yes, I'm glad to report that's uh, that's coming on quite nicely. 
What, what all will the, will the QuickBooks class do? The QuickBooks class, it will allow you, just like the Xero, it allows you to connect. I do need to, I mean, the, 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 the Xero um, is actually being implemented in another um, uh, system and so on, and it lets you do, you know, literally anything that the, their API allows you. So it lets you connect, read your uh, general ledger, or nominal ledger as it is in the UK, but your general ledger set up, um, read accounts, contacts, account balances, post invoices, both sales and purchase, um, post credit notes, post payments, you know, basically everything that the API allows you to do, the, 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 the class basically will have the, uh, the, uh, the, the ability to do that. Now the, the zero demonstrates connection and then it's up to you to really start implementing. That needs, for want of a better term, a bit more meat on the bones. So a few more methods adding to say, okay, get me a queue of clients, get me a queue of accounts or my tax information, that type of thing. Uh, and that'll come with, with time and you, you guys will be the best people to, to, to drive that. The zero one from an application point of view, the one it's already in, does exactly that. It brings them down every so, uh, I think it brings down, it's on a it's on a system setting and whatever the client wants and it brings down the credit limits over uh, the accounts every, I think it's five minutes by default. Um, so yes, basically that's what you'll be able to do. The same with the QuickBooks, it'll be that type of thing. So we'll set you, the, 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 the base one will get you the connectivity, allow you to start pushing queries to it. Um, but I'll put a couple of examples in there so you can bring down you know, invoices, list of invoices since a date, that type of thing, and uh, maybe a demonstration how to post an invoice. Okay, I guess zero, zero must be what is that a European program? Um, it's I'm 99% sure it's Australian, so it's not Australian or New Zealand, but I think it's Australian. Uh, but it is quite large, yeah, a lot of people have taken it on, got to admit. When we've just switched our, well, not just, it was last year, we switched our in-house uh, accounting um, from Sage and we were looking to go zero because obviously I had experience of it, or QuickBooks. Um, in the end, I chose QuickBooks purely on price, if you want the truth. Um, there wasn't really much in it, it's just zero had, uh, sorry, QuickBooks gave us a, an 18-month um, special offer. So I took it literally on price. They're both very similar to each other. But Xero's got quite a user base. Uh, you know, as in, let's have a quick look what they what they boast. I can imagine it being, um, well, obviously this is UK. Um, why Xero? Let's have a look. Just wonder if they'll give you any... Uh, any information, but basically it is, they are a big player. They're up there with the Sage and the, the QuickBooks. They are quite well known, especially for online. Um, again, they're not the cheapest. Um, so, you know, they, uh, they do hold their own uh, and lots of people are using it. So we're getting asked for the interfaces quite often from an application point of view. So, you know, we, we, we put it into the, uh, the chill cat uh, stuff. So, but yeah, it's worth definitely worth a look. And obviously, if you any of your clients do use any of these applications, you'll have the Chillcat wrapper, so you'll you'll be one step ahead for implementing the uh, the interface uh, than than plenty of others straight straight away. Yeah, no, that looks that looks real good, especially the uh, from I know for me, we, I've I've interfaced with uh, QuickBooks for a number of years using the. Uh, CSV or the um, um, of the QuickBooks file, right? Um, yep. And uh, <clears throat> we, but we only upload journal entries. Well, I know from the zero point of view. So I'm going to follow suit with the the QuickBooks, but we the particular. Uh, application it went as its own little synchronizer app sat in the background, but that would um, that would. Uh, bring down tax information every you, know, you might not need to do that basically your, your your tax rates don't exactly change that often so i think it did that once a, once out once per hour but customer information you posting well you you drove that but as for bringing down the latest information uh we put it as um i think it was every five minutes and it would run in the background 
right into a little log, looking if there's any updates since the last time it queried and, and bringing them down and putting them out to a particular uh, you know, a, a file for them to be processed. That's because I, that's how they wanted it working. In your system, you could bring them down and you know, action that particular information because it comes in a, a queue and a, a JSON format. Sorry, in the queue, it'll all be uh, field specified for you automatically. So client will be client and you know, uh, amount will be amount and so on and so forth. Um, but yes, basically they are that coming down, we, we installed it as a service and we left it running for five days solid and it just sat there doing its job. So yeah, it's very, very good. So, so that is Chilcat. Number of updates on that. Um, I'll definitely keep you posted on it. But there's a, a number of updates. Obviously, the next the next build has the SMS. Um, I don't know. I think we've covered it in the past, but it has the SMS for information in there, so you can send via. Uh, at the moment, it supports the Twilio, and uh, it's about eighty odd percent on the Plyval. Telesign and Text Local, I will disable. For, for, for the first build and then I'll, I'll have those two gateways afterwards but it'd be very simple you literally select whichever gateway hopefully Twilio is a default put your message and you've got your connect send and then you can query the state of the ones you sent very very simple so these are the task classes which are proving to be very, very popular but of course they're built on top of the base classes so these are all taking shape as well Okay, um, update to the calendar. Uh, we had an update last week, and there was actually another update that went out um, after afterwards the uh, on the Tuesday. Just trying to find my notes on the calendar update, and it was the reminder facility. Now let me just quickly open the example because I updated the calendar class 4.02 last week, and you had it in time for the webinar. On the Tuesday, I updated 4.03, and I also included a new delayed start on the reminder facility on your application frame. So it might be that as your application starts, you didn't want it until maybe you've got various different initialization tasks that you want it to accomplish and so on and so forth. And then you want the, the app frame reminders to kick in. Um, and some people were saying, oh, they, they, they're jumping straight in, you know, uh, straight away. And uh, how do I delay it? And so on. So we've just uh, give you the option for a delayed start. So um, now it's just an extra option. You can say, OK, wait for 30 seconds. And that won't physically start um, for until 30 seconds have passed. And then it will kick into life. Uh, I've just got a, a question from one of the users. So I'm just going to reply to him because I know he's been trying to get on. Um, you can... Okay, sorry about that. Um, so you've got a delayed start and the example app. Let me bring this the example app into play so we can actually see what we're talking about. Okay. Uh, so a new build of 403 got uploaded today. Okay. So in the example application, the example app now, it's available in the 403 build. Um, even though it was released last week, it was rebuilt today, just with new examples in. So you can re-download it. It didn't increment the, the build number. Um, but you do have on the application frame, should you want to delay. Oh, I've still got the reminders on there. OK, well, I'll quickly add it, should you, should you want to. If you were to put the reminders on there 
then one of the options you've got, let's let me have a look, is a delayed start. Now you can tick it and say, okay, wait for, and it can be a variable if you want it to be a variable. So uh, wait for 45 seconds. And basically it won't start the calendar loading. It won't start any of the calendar functions until this time has passed. So that's just a quick update what went in uh, for 403 last week. And of course, um, compatibility to CodeJock 18.30 and all of the, um, all of the, uh, installers have been rebuilt to include compatibility with 18.3. So should you need them, you've got them all at your disposal. Uh, from the calendar point of view, uh, update, put a couple of updates in here now. So now we can see the recurring reminders. Uh, we've got, these are the built-in code jock. These are what you had before. So if we press this, we can see the code jock reminder window pop up as it, as it always has done. And they um, basically are on the uh, the main application thread because this window here has to be on the application thread. Then you've got the new Niantis reminder. So I'll quickly show you the setting, but it's just a template setting to say, don't use the code job reminder, use the Niantis reminder. And this now is can be on the MDI frame. Uh, sorry, on the uh, MDI. Um, window so nothing to do with the app frame if you don't want it to be and this is the actual Niantis window all as we've mentioned in, in previous ones all of these particular properties down to the wording and so on are all customizable so do you want this button to even be visible do you want it disabled do you, and so on no actually the, the disabled um, depends on what actions you're clicking but do you want it visible do you want the icon on there so on and so forth all uh, controlled by yourself down to even down to the wording for translation and then we give an example to the custom reminders so this will demonstrate how demonstrate how to put in the custom reminder window it even includes a little custom reminder window so you could actually uh, have your own reminder window this is a local queue so you could put your own extra fields in there look them up so you could look up customer information so it might be that you've got a subject where you want to include customer information maybe telephone numbers contact emails things like that so this is to demonstrate you doing a custom reminder window um, and just demonstration I put a quick icon on the on the window and rearranging the buttons but the beauty of it is that can be anything you were uh, you want it to be those two examples are let me just cancel that there's a custom one so we can see on this on the calendar example on the calendar extension we tell it to oh sorry reminders we tell it we're doing custom reminder so previously you only ever had a use use calendar use reminders now you've got not in use use the cold drop window which was the default prior uh, use the Niantis window which was the other example you saw or use custom and if you're using custom there's some embed code you need to do but it is in there and there's an actual example custom reminder window so feel free to pinch that if you wanted to implement your own custom uh, reminder window and change it accordingly but that's got all the code in there that you uh, that you need and then last but not least was we got asked um, a couple of ways of passing the class around so Let's just jump back to that customer reminder window. The customer re custom reminder window, basically you pass it the address of the calendar class across to it. So there's an example because it started on its own thread, um, which gives you the, the, the beauty of, let's just fire this up and we can say here, let's move that, that move that there. And there's a fire inspection six hours ago. We'll bring that down to there, oops, bring it down to there. We can't see the window because it's there. There it is. Four hours and bring it there. So three hours. So basically, even though it's on another thread, it's still talking to it. It will send messages across to tell it, you know, go and rebuild. Now it's this this amount of time. Likewise, if I go to that, there's our reminder icon on the fire inspection. If I say dismiss, the reminder's gone because of course I've just dismissed it. There is no reminder now. So that basically executes on its own thread. 
and you pass it because of course the pro prototype can only be string 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 um on a on a started um procedure so the prototype has to be just a single string uh, and we pass it the address of the calendar class. So this demonstra demonstrates one particular way of passing the class around. So we define our own instance of the calendar class. Uh, sorry, our own definition of it. And then in the window in it, we assign that into our own. And then that gives us the ability to use that throughout. So for example, uh, always wrap it in a Make sure it's not null, otherwise you'll be accessing a, a null object and you'll get a GPF. Um, but that's good. That's just good practice. Um, as long as you've got a calendar class, then we go off using the class as you would normally do with the methods. So that demonstrates passing a class around as a as an address. And of course, you can do this with the other classes, you know, the command bars and report controls and so on. And the other example we put in there was to do with passing the whole class around, but the, but the, the, the class as a parameter. So for example, here, oh, not that one, sorry, what it calls. Um, if we look in the way you would normally do your load events, now it just calls a source procedure and it actually passes the class. So rather than the, the address, it passes the, cra the class. The reason I didn't do it on the other one was basically down to the prototype. It has to be a string when you're starting a new thread. Whereas on this, we're not starting a thread, so we can just say the prototype would be, we're expecting a class coming across. So we pass it the calendar pro itself. And on the receiving uh, procedure, it is calendar pro and a couple of dates, start date and end date. And all we do there is we just go and access it calendar as you would do just like, like in the other one so again you can use that approach on all of the products um, but we've put a, an example in there so you can actually see it uh, in action in, in this one any questions on the calendar before we move on oh just saw something pop up Marty uh, populate um, regardless of being cold. Cold. Let me open the mic up. Hi, Marty. Hi, Andy. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, a little low, but yes. All right, we'll try to move it up a little. <laughs> so, I, I'm struggling to to remember clearly, but the uh, the way that I recall it was that the uh, when we were working on this and you had demonstrated to me how uh, you know the the standard way of doing it is to add the items to the calendar and then only call populate at the uh, end yes and we discovered that even if we took the populate out they were already there which explains some of the delays that i was at least seeing uh, the way i was doing it uh, so uh, if that sounds familiar, I it hope does. That. Yes, I, I do remember. Is that, that actually at the uh, DEF CON? The, was that Correct. The, uh, yes. At the at the table. That's right. Um, I still need to look at that to be honest, because it kind of doesn't make sense on what I know works under this under the surface. So something. It sounds like there's an explicit. If, if that is the case, and, and so on, then it sounds like there's an explicit uh, populate somewhere where it shouldn't be. It should be under condition. So I will. I have my dev list, ever-growing dev list, of course. Uh, but I will, I think I put it on. Let me just quickly check the backlog. Um, it was on the calendar. Um, check suppressed refresh. Yes, we have got it as one of the options. Uh, what, sorry, one of the tasks on there. Check suppressed refresh parameter works. Um, so no, I've not had a chance, but you you, you raise a good point only because of uh, the, the good practice. The example app still had uh, basically a mixture of different ways of calling the load events and, uh, and especially the change event. So I've updated it now to best practice. So if we look at, we'll take the simple for example, but in here, I do encourage where possible to I think all these have been changed, but basically prime up a group, which is right. a built-in group, prime up the group, um, go through, 
do your insert, but it's but without the false, which is the question mark which we're, we're which we're discussing. Um, we should give you the speed of looping through whatever you need to loop through without painting the calendar, and then of course, uh, I mean, if we did that, let's just quickly. Well, we'll try this, but the, the best practice would be don't repaint as you're going through, and then just issue right. one at the end. I, I mistakenly use populate, but yes, exactly. So, right, go ahead, compile it. So, but just while we're on that, um, if we did, now this is a common embed point, the sync calendar to file. Uh, nope, sorry, the, the other one. Sync file to calendar. So you've updated it on the file maybe via the update form, and now you want to put it back into the calendar. Now, this previously, you might have had a, an insert with separate commands afterwards or you might have just had the group but you wouldn't have had it um as per the example for the change so now basically the best practice would be clear your group prime it up just like you would uh, uh, if you were inserting uh, during your file load and then basically have a look at the mode that's being passed into this embed point because it receives what mode insert change delete an optional the ID of the calendar event and an optional record ID of the calendar event. So the best practice would be prime up the group to all the particular thing, you know, uh, uh, attributes that you need. And then if you're in insert mode, insert event from group. And if you're in change mode, change event from group. And it just takes an extra parameter of the record ID. Sorry, not the record ID, the event ID. So that would be very. I would encourage your users to uh, to implement that type of approach. So let's see what happens when we compile. Okay. So yes, yeah, so on this one on simple. Now I do want to do an extra test in a minute because during the init, this is probably an unfair test on the init. So let me just put one extra thing in here. We're going to, on the load, after the delete, we're going to put, we're going to force it to update after we've deleted everything. So we don't expect any events. And this is on the load records, of course. Uh, one of the new options we've got is the um, key code for refresh yourself. So I'm going to say, okay, when I press F5, I want it to go and reload. And I want to know whether the issue is just to do with the initialization of the calendar or is it basically uh, doing the insert and still refreshing? Right. So so we've got that. Now, if IF5 is going to go to force refresh, which will include that, that record. So I'm pressed it yet, but what I'm hoping will happen will be we're going to... It, no, should, me, blank. it should blank it. And we're still going to come back. Right which is a little worrying. Oh, let me just jump into that. So that's something I, I need to look at because that shouldn't have been the case. There's nothing been moved in code afterwards, is there? No, just a straightforward file load records, which is his parent call, do that. Because if I was to put the load under condition, so basically, which will never, of course, happen. I won't expect any when we first go in, and I won't expect any after a refresh. So it does, it does suggest that uh, that refresh isn't being taken into account, which is a little confusing. So yeah, that's that's a, a something for me to look at because that shouldn't technically have worked. So would that be in the uh, in the insert event from group uh, method or it's underneath? Well, it could, it could be it could be in that method, but uh, it could be elsewhere. I mean, if we have a look in the actual calendar. Um, just got the class open here, so it's a insert event from group not aware that this has changed uh, data provider we add if it's a recurring which is not 
if we repeat which is not and then we come down to um, only only do the populate and redraw under condition in fact I could even I'm just commenting out the physical um, populate and redraw supposed to see your screen oh sorry <laughs> but yes basically just I've just commented that as a you know as a test right and you're still getting them so um, hmm. suggest to me that it's coming from elsewhere possibly the um, apply custom icons possibly that it's going to be one of the either it wouldn't be the um, the actual adding of the event I will have to chase it through basically because oh, okay. all okay. we're going to do here we're talking directly to a, um, a data the data provider which is the internal data provider um, standard set property none of these should really be forcing the repaint so of course we're presuming here that um, the fault is here of course it could be because we're on newer versions of the cold shot control I will have to check it against um, uh, basically previous when we were when we were doing it we didn't have I, f I forget which versions we were checking on on uh, I think it was the latest versions mm, yes okay yeah that's that's a fair enough comment so but yes I will uh, it's on the it's on the list it's on my uh, Jira list uh, so okay, uh, I will uh, I will would take that, a look and would that would that affect the delay uh, in in popular calendar in general in other words if I'm inside a loop uh, my, my understanding was the best practice uh, avoided the delay you just repaint at the end if it was actually internally uh, repainting every time or repopulating and so forth. oh you uh, you would get a delay from that yeah you would get a delay right. okay. so um, uh, yes yeah, it's, it's definitely best to put all the data into the calendar and then tell it to repaint itself once right so. although it appears that um, at least uh, in the default approach uh, even though we're telling it to repaint itself once, in fact, it's actually yeah. doing it every time. And that, that would explain at least some of the delay that I'm seeing. So, um, I mean, it's, there's, there's various, when you actually, um, if we go to the actual core engine of it, so it's the event funk, um, the, all the methods come back and there's lots go, goes on in here. It could be a change in this code basically which which is also forcing the redraw when it shouldn't oh, okay. do so yeah there's there's going to be a bit of digging for me to do to be honest uh, to, see, to see what it is uh, so apologies for that it's definitely no problem. There. I, can, uh, I can I can demonstrate it now so we can see but yes <laughs> okay. there is a list and there it is so <laughs> not, not my imagination okay no no I would like to, like to prove it there <laughs> uh, and you. last but not least on the calendar I forgot to say the different themes demonstration of the different themes was updated as well so it's in office 2010 by default so but the the theme loading of course is the same method you would use for any of the controls so command bar uh, report control docking pane but it would be this so I put them into a queue uh, and just give you the ability to basically switch the theme so we can see it's it's, it's Excel or it's Outlook very similar actually PowerPoint and jump to some of the new 2016 so Excel black so basically you've got the themes available to you and I just quickly quickly updated the example there so it's not a bad example app to go with um, uh, as, a, as a, a default uh, Roberto just asked and I will open the mic about the link to the list box uh, hi Roberto and Hello. Uh, no, basically what we're just saying is in the 403 we added the ability to, which, which came out last week, we added the ability to uh, add a delay to the uh, frame reminders and then we updated the examples today which is what you're seeing. And the example apps from, from now on are being in Clarion 8 format ready for going forward, not no longer Clarion 6. The templates still, the, 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 the template still support Clarion 6 but um, 
yeah, we we just we've gone with Chloe and eight for the examples. So um, so yes, but. Uh, Old, 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 old example if they want it. Huh? <laughs> I guess, yeah, there will be. So technically, I think the classes and templates will actually still work with Chloe and 5.5, but uh, we officially don't support it any longer, uh, which I think is fair enough now. But the, yeah, it's, the, a, it's a pain to get yeah. <laughs> that uh, that uh, the, the link to list um, actually isn't on. Oh, yes, it is. It's there. It's uh, TPLs 22. So the uh, we put it on last week, but it just didn't, didn't make it into that build. We we saw it last week, but we've had so much other stuff on, which we mentioned earlier. Uh, right. The chill cat updates, there's, uh, there's a lot of work on the chill cat going on. Um, so, yes, so that's the calendar. And then last but not least, so we've had a chill the talk. The calendar update is out. We've spoke about the chill cat update. We have 37 minutes into the webinar. We've not even couple of things yet and last but not least is the report control now that isn't released but it is in dev as you can see um still thrashing out a couple of uh couple of uh, things on there but you now have if we go to track view let's have a look here we'll go to date make it easier um so if you go to the track view You've got a new option in here to say, okay, yeah, on the general, uh, I might move it to the timeline tab actually, but basically you've got the incremental style. Previously it was just purely numeric. It expected a numeric value and it was up to you to manually embed the code to say what format you wanted it to be. So now you've got numeric date and time, the default being Sorry, the default being numeric, which was what you, the only one you had last time. You need to put some parameters on here to say basically when it should paint. Uh, at the moment, if we look in our code, that should be commented out, which of course it is. Um, and it will paint, uh, I think it's only painting every Sunday at the moment, but that's where the parameters will come in. So you'll say which days you want it to actually paint the uh, the label on so if we bring this a little smaller and where are we now the 18th that's uh that was, that was yesterday so that's a sunday so you can see it's only painting on the sunday um so i need to basically prompt you for which days do you want it to paint on and uh in, in what style do you only want like the first so many characters that type of thing so um there's there's tidy ups of that to do but it's essentially done and a similar one to the time although yeah that's currently uh, in progress as well so yeah so that's um that's the work as we are um basically on with at the moment and last but not least let's switch back to that date uh, is the two new methods so you've got whether a block has been you basically it was as you was moving a block around um that's that's maybe they're the wrong way around but basically that's uh, the, the the bit that's just in dev at the moment um yeah i'd expect that to when i when i mouse up to pulse and moved you have a left one and a right aligned sorry you have your left aligned and the right aligned on selected and moving Oh no, that's just, this is yeah, this is the uh, this isn't the um, official test app. This is more just a dev app for me to while I'm okay. while I'm playing about. Yeah, nothing more, nothing less. Um, so um, so basically, yes, that's uh, that's where we're up to on that. So it's not released now. I know Kevin is. Let's open the mic to Kevin because that was one of the challenges for today to work on this. So, hi, uh, Kevin. Hi, good morning. Yes, good. How, how are you doing? All right. So, yeah, that's that's a good one. Moved event. How are we doing on collision? Well, the collision we said we're going to have to discuss here because I think that's going to be more building a queue of the the, the uh, of the collisions, if you will. So where they are overlapping. Um, I think example last week we, we we dragged a load of things down to show something along the lines of if these were both for the same row. Yeah. The intention was, I don't know, you you had to leave early, didn't you? So we did have a quick chat, and I don't know if you, you missed uh, the end of it, but the, the idea we, we came up with was 
let's say this is one particular resource, so that's foundation. And if you was loading your data, um, the, 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 the idea is to have a, basically a mechanism where it can detect if you've got that ultimately starting, I can't think of the time, so it's very, you know, very poor. Let's pull that back. So that uh, should start about here-ish. Okay, so you would have a, a, a collision. If that's the case, to have some kind of mechanism to add a second child, a, a second role, but it would be a child role for the foundation, which basically would demonstrate that uh, underneath. So both of those, those would have to visually look like they belong to foundation, if that makes right. sense. But, yes, but of course, um, this, I think that's the only way during a, a load that you'd physically be able to do it. You wouldn't want to be able to pick this up um, and move it from row to row because, well, you see, we, we wouldn't want to. There's a question in your application that quite, you, you might want to be able to uh, pick that up and move it down to a completely different resource if there's a collision. Well, you would, because well, yeah. you what you're showing is that this guy is booked for two appointments at the same time, so maybe you have another technician that can take that appointment. Exactly. So exactly. So in that scenario, um, you would still have this blank line, unfortunately, underneath uh, for foundation, because I think... Um, well, until you refresh, you know. Oh, yes, of course, a refresh, but that would that's essentially reloading so yes then you could do the uh do the load accordingly so that's the the kind of approach that we discussed the technology of of loading those and finding those collisions uh no i've not done that bit uh, yet um apologies for that but that's essentially the idea we had after you've done your load so it so knows that you've finished you you've basically um would it have to be a call you see, there's the thing. I can give a method, but it'd be really it'd be a method that you would want to call yourself um, because only you know when you finish loading your data. Would that be true? Well, yeah, but at the same point, wouldn't it just be, well, yeah, you wouldn't want to do it every time you just refresh or repaint the calendar because that would be your collision logic might get caught in itself because you know you've already you've already done collision checking once i i would not object to saying okay you know uh now do the collision detection um well i was just thinking the only one the only one place i've got um to really say okay I know that i finished loading is if you were using the the browse enhancer but of course the browse enhancer is for these records on the left. It's not for the content on the right. That's where you would really add the blocks and keys if you are using keys, but the, yeah. essentially the blocks. You, you're adding them um, yourself. So I think you know, it's a, as long as I gave you the uh, method to say, okay, you know, detect collisions, something like that, or detect, yeah, whatever we call it, um, then that could essentially find the collisions and automatically add the tree rolls uh, to to demonstrate the collisions. You just have to be careful that you don't add multiple foundation lines because you have three collisions. Doesn't mean you have three lines because the other collisions can still go on the second line. You know, you understand yeah, what I'm saying? I, I, you know, yeah. If you add, let's say all these, you don't want a different line for every single collision. You want to minimize your collision lines as much as possible. Yeah, so for example, if you had one collision, let's say both of these are foundation. Yes. Uh, if you had one collision, then it would show like so. So you'd have that with a tree. Mm -hmm. Okay, now if you had another collision, so let's really pull these out of the way. Now, if you had another collision and say it was there, then you would want it to be basically visible like, like so. Correct. That's fine. But if you had another collision which didn't affect so, um actually no that would be there that would be perfectly fine from its raw data point of view because there's no collision at all that's what i would prefer not a third fourth line yeah yeah which so you know instead of like so because exactly. then you have kind of lost okay um that's gonna be um yeah no that's, that's doable that's doable because as i build the block queue 
as I build the block queue, I can see basically what the last collision level was that I applied to it. Of course, default being zero. So as I'm loading these in, let's say I load these records in. So I load these in, yep, yeah, yeah, detect the collision. I've detected one. So what was the last level? Zero, add level one to it. That's great. And if that row didn't exist, we'll add the row first. We'll take that as a given. We then bring this one in and it says, okay, uh, the row didn't exist, add it, and the last level was one, so now we want that to be two. That's great. But that's for that, this particular block, of course. Then we come to this one. The last the last collision level for this was zero. We've got one, so add one, and it, add it to row one. And that creative, it doesn't already exist, giving you what we're after. So that's... that's well, so you'll, you'll, you'll have it done tomorrow, right? <laughs> <laughs> we will... Um, no, but at least you have the thought. You have the thought, which is the important part. Yes, yeah. Do you know what? I'm going to watch the uh, good job this is recorded. I'm going to watch this back for my own sake uh, when I'm doing the actual work. But the key, the, the key there is I've still got the, you know, basically the the moving and the moved, and uh, it's detecting basically the mouse down, uh, but it's not for some reason uh, not actually doing it. But it will that that was literally the dev up to today's webinar. Uh, I like to be brutally honest, and that was literally in the in the in dev up to here now so it'll be something very similar you know, sorry it'll be something very simple and I'm, I'm not really uh panicking about that that'll be mopped up straight after the webinar to be honest uh, now the other the other thing would be is how you would uh how are you going to handle let's let's take uh let's take one of those blue blocks just any blue block and just drag it up to the first line on top of block two Mm. You automatically detect the collision on the first line. Drag it straight up to the top first line foundation. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so basically there. Well, and there it's in the end to end, but you're really forcing the collision. You you're gonna struggle because basically, I I, I think you're gonna struggle because the calendar, the, the calendar, the the control itself doesn't allow you to physically cause a collision. Is okay. It, if that's I a limitation. Move this. That's okay. That's that's not a bad limitation because a lot of times our users, if they're in that situation, we can say, well, you know, you just have to double click to open up the edit form and then put in the times that you really want, and then when the screen's repainted, the collision will show correctly. Yeah, I was going to say basically, I think unless there's some other settings. Oh, well, you've just reminded me of a, a calendar setting actually, which. Um, I will mention after this uh, for everybody. It could, 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 could come in handy. It's something we've been asked for a few times. Um, but basically, uh, unless there's some settings in the control, which I will have a look to say allow for collisions, I don't think it, it particularly wants you to, via the via the mouse, via the UI, want you to actually go and do the, the collision. There is something about uh, if I pushed that along, would you, would you want it to basically do the equivalent of, push this automatically and there are some settings uh, for that uh, I think I've seen in the past but as for physically causing two to overlap no I don't think it will uh, will allow it or okay. not by, definitely not by default so um, if and, and, you, and if we think about it you really wouldn't want your users causing that by via mouse anyway you know you, you probably want that kind of logic in an update form informing them or, or whatever you know uh, i know we we've done that in the past when double booking into a calendar you would put up a, a thing at the end and it'll say you, you do realize you're going to overlap with appointment you know for dental surgery a root canal treatment and you're going to overlap with that which which is a bit of a bugger you can't really go and overlap with something you know a, a basically a serious procedure like well, that well if there's an option you just mentioned there's an option that would keep the block two from moving around automatically because they're trying to force a collision that would be good because basically it would keep negating their action i don't want i don't want the block two to move around just because they're trying to double book so that would be a good option well you can you can disable a single block from being moved around but that would stop it completely. So uh, no, no. You said there. Were, you thought there was an option that if you're trying to drag the blue block onto the red block, it can move the red block down or up. I don't. I prefer it to negate the action in that case. Well, I, I don't know down or up, but I think that I, from memory, it was left right, so yeah, right. it was left and right. So if I was to pull this, I'm sure I've seen it at one point where it actually started moving the next one, the one along, to give this basically the preference. So it's saying, uh -huh. no, I want this to take, I want this to have this space, and ultimately pushing the rest along. I vaguely remember seeing something like that, um, 
in my test in, in the test days when I was doing the um, the track view. But um, it was a while ago, so yeah, we'll have to blow a few cobwebs away to uh, to, to find that. Perfect. So. Cool. so Any progress is appreciated. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. Um, once, because I'm not really, I'm not panicking over this uh, this this moving. Like I say, it was only in dev just on the lead up to this. So I'll get that uh, worked out and see why um, it, it's not updating correctly. Um, and these are just the embed points. So very simple to implement. Basically, we are block moved. So you can see moving. And all I'm doing is just quickly saying, okay, well, nothing's moved and that's what's moving. And vice versa, when you when, you, when you're finished, um, it will go, you know, the block moved uh, will tell you that it's actioned. Um, I'll finish that bit off along with the date and timeline enhancement and I'll get the update out. That will ensure that you'll get an update out a lot faster. And then I'll put the the the, uh, the clash detection in there, which gives you something to start, you know, uh, changing in your code straight from the off. So you, you're already one step ahead, ready for the class detection, the, the, the block detection. Perfect. So, so yes. Uh, but you did remind me one thing on the calendar, and uh, it will be. I'll I'll implement it in the uh, the next build of the calendar. But we get asked quite a few times for an ability, uh, sorry, in a way of getting rid of this, the all day area, because some users don't support all day. So it's a case of you can drag it and put it into the all day, and they don't want that. And they don't want things to basically they don't want it they don't want to take that space up and i found a particular setting got in touch with cold jock and it didn't work <laughs> um sorry i found a setting and it didn't work so i chased it through with cold jock and basically there is another setting it's very simple can't believe i've never actually seen it before and chances are you guys might have done but i'm just going to put it in the um, in it complete Just now, it will go on a, a switch. It's a, it's a going to a future build to say basically allow the all day area. So in the init complete, I'm just going to say, just going to turn it off, and the code is really simple. It's hide all day area. <laughs> so it's not exactly rocket science. We'll put that in, do a compile, and you will see if we go into the simple calendar now. Now, why is that? Is that part of the thing? Because, yeah. Hmm. You can't drag into it, but I got it, unless that is just part of that, that particular style, because on the calendar where I implemented it, that's not there at all. You can't drag into it. The the, the thing is still there, that meeting with Niantis. Uh, but I actually got it so it was even smaller. So you didn't get that at all. Must be moved with settings. But basically, you can see the actual that 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 particular all day area has actually gone. There's no pulling into it. Uh, it rejects that movement and just leaves it um, where it was. So do you have to make sure on your form you don't allow the all day option because then you would lose your calendar? It, it depends really down to your your requirements, your application. In the one okay. where I got asked for it, um, and we have been asked for this setting in the template in the past, uh, and I tried one particular other setting okay. which which never worked. But in the application I was working on, they don't support, so there's no such thing as an all day event. So they were saying if I don't support it. I don't want that that room being taken up on the calendar, and I definitely don't want stuff being dropped into that because that can screw up the data. So, um, so basically, that that one setting um, is what you're looking for. But what happens if you already have a like a three day event? Oh, well, again, that really will it show company. it or will it not show it? Or uh, well, I'll tell you what. Uh, <laughs> because I mean, it really down, it comes down to your own application design. There, if you right, right, you know, if you if you have three day events, then ultimately you do support all day events by by Maybe definition. Since you already have those events, that's why that kind of row stays there. It, well, you can't well, add anything in there, but maybe that's why it stayed. Yep. Well, let's have a look. We'll put it on a switch. Um, all day events. 
of course. Oops. So we will put that our new field there somewhere. Da, da, da. Hang on a second, that's not a class. But I'll put it in the checkbox. Sorry. Spending too long in uh, in the thin air. There you go. Thank you. Okay, so we've got do support. Oh, okay, I've I've done the toggle the wrong way around, but that's fine. It's enough to get us our data in. So we're right. going to say okay, we're going to go from the nineteenth to the twenty-first, uh, nine till nine thirty, free day. So we should move that to the top. Okay. Right. So Correct. yeah, you're not going to see it because, in fairness, we've told it to hide. So I'm presuming it's that. Yeah, so it shouldn't show it then. Uh, well, at least that's what it's doing, yeah. Yeah. Can you move it? If well, I, I can move it, of course. Can it. I, can, yeah. I can move it here, uh, uh, because I can currently see it. If I can grab hold of it, I can move when it. When you see it, but when you turn it off, then you can't see it at all. Yeah, so I've tried, I've tried to resize it, but it's just my poor mouse uh, <laughs> skills. Does, does it show it on the month, though? On the month view? Yes, because the day view is literally the it, that's sorry the old okay. day area. That's just for the week one, yeah. Okay, and I should imagine you get that in the the full week view. But I mean course, for the day one, yeah. Okay, yeah, if we were to turn this off, you get it in this view because that, as I mentioned last week, although we've got working week, full week, and custom days, mm -hmm. of course, so you could be the, those two days and that. This is essentially still day view, right. So that's day view. That is day view. Full week is still um, day view. These are literally like subsettings, if you will. It's only when that is another view. That's week view, and that is month view. So the calendar only essentially has three views, even though the settings allow you to go a lot more. Right. So it only disappeared on the day view. Yes, which is the only place you actually get to see the all day view, the all day area. Right, right. Just going to change that prompt because it's going to bug me. <laughs> could you not? Could you not put an if statement in there, Andy? That if on uh, if an all day event is in in that focus that's showing up here that that day, that it would just automatically turn that on for you. Oh, I that's see. What you idea, mean. I see. Yeah. yeah. So in. In the the data that you've cut out, well, it depends. Yeah, it, you could run we, your loop, right, on your data and see if there's any all day. Oh, I can detect this. it during the, basically, yeah. I could do a quick scan of the data from the within the calendar itself. So right. if you flip to the next week, it would be gone. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So if I went to that, it would be, let's uh, keep it in working. Yeah. But if you're setting, if you really want to move it to an all day event, then you won't be able to. I know you mean, like Bill said there, if I go to there, well, then we yeah. don't see it. If I go to there, then we do see part of it and, and so on. So I can turn it on and turn it off via logic. Um, and that logic would have to also be on the view change. So if you did say you changed a view, mind you, no, it wouldn't need to be turned on because it doesn't affect that view and it doesn't affect uh, that view either. So, yeah, so it's not a bad idea. Could actually do that. It, but, mean, it means people, you know, I don't know what your feedback is. All of a sudden, you would see it. So you would see it, then you wouldn't see that area, then you would see it again. Um, and do you have got the question? If you if you've got one there, you ob obviously support that in your system. So if I turned it off there, 
How you would you? Fit one. Yeah, yeah, you can fit one again. Yeah, you you could do it via a form, the update form, like just like yeah. I did a minute ago. I guess you'd have you could have a flag and have it, you know, support that or something. Yeah, but but you wouldn't be able to drag into it. And one of the, the calendar things right. is you can actually go and drag that in and say, "I want you to go up there." Right. We just have to tell the user that on if it's an all-day event and they want to drag it into a next week, that they'd have to you know click on it and make the change manually. Well, I mean, there's there's I could quite easily update, uh, give you the ability to drop a control onto the screen, just like we do with like this, the time scale. Um, that's a, an add-on control that we. But it's a client control, but it's a it's a window control that we put as part of the template to say, okay, change the time zone, uh, the the you know the the time uh, increments, and we do also one with if it's anywhere around the view type. I'll just add one; it's easier uh, into there. Calendar view type. So yeah, forget that. Quickly add it to so link it to the calendar. And cute. <laughs> um so just like you can add that, we can say, okay, change today, change so on. I could add the equivalent of hide all day area as a window, as a control. And as you navigate through, if it auto t uh, turned it off or auto turned it on, it could automatically change your control uh, on the screen. So basically, um, always keeping it in sync and then the user can override it just by ticking it, giving you the best of both worlds. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> okay, so that's all the updates, a couple of questions and ideas. Um, any other questions? We did, we did get asked a question online now. Oh, he's here, Robert's here. Uh, I don't know if you've got a, a microphone. Uh, hi, Robert, or Roberto, uh, but not Renz. Um, oh. yeah. I'm like, I didn't do anything unless this is on air. But... No, um, we've got a, another Roberto, and I was wondering, um, did you have questions? Oh, Artigas. Kind of, Artigas, okay. yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Did, did we have questions about uh, the – there was a logged a question regarding – the initialization you couldn't actually get the content to work now i'll just cover the the, the basics i'm not sure your mic's open in case you have got a microphone uh, roberto but i'll just cover the basics um anyway for the code version and if you're using regfreecom then basically you what you do want to use the predefined versions so you can see here rather than the specify and the reason for that is if i go into um well, you're using registry, use registry com, which is brilliant, very good. But if we look at these here, you have to build in your license code, which I know you had done in your examples. That's good. But it's these two lines. The predefined basically calculate them for you. So we can see here that we're using 18.3 and it's 1998 to 2018. If I was to choose one of the older ones, 17.3. We can see it's now to 2016 and it's 17.3 and so on and so forth. So these lines get calculated for you by using the predefined. If you use a specify, then you can, oh, we'll have that as thing here, then you can go and enter them uh, just to demonstrate the predefined. They would still be calculated, but uh, even though you're compiling in, they would be disabled. But on specify, they would become enabled. So you're never stuck. You're never tied to just the, the, the templates that you've got. If you updated the code jock and didn't update our things, our templates, not the end of the world. You can still carry on using. But your regfreecom won't work because you're using specify. 
I wouldn't know what you are using. I know you're typing one in, but it could be anything. And chances are the specifier is something that we haven't got the actual Registry.com settings for in the library. So we don't calculate uh, and fill in the actual files. And what I mean by the files is, let's just say we go to 18.3, uh, forget the, 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 the license, but the, the user registry com. We'll have a quick compile. And now, if we have a look in our folder, you can see there are two files created. These two you would ship with your application. The manifest file for your application, and that's got an extra dependency in there, saying you're going to need that file, Extreme Calendar Control, with 18300. And you would also have the actual Extreme Calendar file manifest as well, 18300, with the actual settings for the calendar, for that version of the calendar. So these are the GUIDs for that version. And basically, the, the, the point I'm making is if you use specify, you could be specifying 18.3.1.2. I wouldn't know what these settings are. It wouldn't be able to calculate, and this would be empty. So just to demonstrate, I'll go into specify now, just do a recompile. And now I'd expect that to be empty. So it creates the empty manifest for you, but there's no content in there because it, it doesn't know what they are and it can't calculate them. So that's the reason. So if you're, if you're using the Red Free Com, always use the predefined options. Uh, I try and keep them relatively up to date. There might be a, uh, a week or so between the uh, Code Jock uh, releasing and you getting a template update uh, out, uh, but I do try and keep on top of them relatively, uh, relatively in sync. So, uh, so yes. Okay. Uh, any other, so thank you. So hopefully that was a help to uh, to yourself. But if you get stuck, the weekly webinars here, and of course I'm at the end of the year. <laughs> I'm at the end of the year email and so on. Anyway. Okay, um, any other questions or are we done? We're a little ahead of time, but that's not a bad thing. Nope, not seeing any questions. And the, no, no questions. How are we doing on the um, multi-DLL support? The, <laughs> yes, um, do you know, it's got to be... Uh, not that you want to hear this, of course, but I do like to be honest. Um, it's got to be a two or three weeks since I've actually done, probably three weeks actually, since I've done actual any dev on it, touched it, only because of getting the, the these other updates which have um, caught up and caught up on us really, and and getting them out. So um, I'm not after after these particular things, including the the block. Uh, um, uh, conflict, which we've, we, we've mentioned for a few weeks now. Uh, basically, once, once that's out and so on, then yes, I will get the uh, the, the CJ resources. The, the file is uh, is there. It's in dev. Um, just trying to open it up here now. CJ resource. Probably, I can probably add it as one of the extensions. Oh, not that one. Yeah. Um, so yes, basically it um, it's 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 in dev, but I've not touched it for a few weeks while I get the other stuff out. Um, I'd like to get the Chillcat. Uh, that is, I'm not awfully worried about that. It's in pretty good shape as it is. I'd like to get the Chillcat update out and the report control update out. And once those are out, then we will have to add, we will add this next. But, but in reality, it's probably going to be another couple of weeks before we're actually on it. I'm just waiting for those before I can update to everything else. I know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Every week you see, you know, uh, new, new, <laughs> new ideas, uh, new toys, especially with the calendar and so on. And they, uh, I know. Uh, 
yeah, it's, it's quite a popular one. Um, I mean, I've got other changes in progress in the command bar, but I'm going to purposely hold off the command bar update because of uh, if, we, if we keep keep doing the individuals, we're never going to get the resource one out. Um, and it's causing, I won't say problems, but it does hinder people from updating. So you, yourself included. <laughs> yeah. Okay, just checking. Uh, yep. No, no, that's that's. Uh, we have to start a question. Paul asked, are uh, the 18.3 templates uh, available? And, and yes, they are. Basically, at the obviously, we've got the, the calendar, the command bar. We've got all the different products. And at the heart of them are two, two basically, files. There's NYS Common, the Inc. and the CLW, from a, a class point of view. And there's NYS Lib and Lib uh, RFC from a TP. W point of view, those two files uh, for the class and for the uh, the the, the uh, template are libraries which have quite of you know quite a lot of settings in them. So when I Code released a new version, say eighteen three, with the example, I update the uh, the TPW to allow you to select that, to allow you to select the new version, detect it in other places, and to generate the actual registry comp settings for that particular version. But I only really have to essentially just update just two files out of the, all of the products. So I don't release a, a new version just for that. I have done in the past, but there's been other things included. So for example, the calendar, for, for, that got an increment of its number because it got a new function added, as well as CodeJock 18.3. Uh, compatibility but as for all the others their installers just get rebuilt so if i make the announcement um 18 free is now supported the golden rule is just go and re always go and re-download the latest installer and um it, the version number might not have changed but it's because it's only one core common library uh across the whole suite so anytime i release any product if i was to release the report control tomorrow chances are well i, I have if I was to bring it into interview here, okay, okay, got a few on the go. We can see our equates has had some new equates added, track bar, numeric, date, and time. So that would go. So basically, anytime we re release any product, all of the installers get uh, rebuilt with the with the common files, the NYS common and the A, the, the lib uh, Reg free com and so on and so forth. They get rebuilt with those. So that you're always ensured that you will you won't have an old version. You can always just go and read down the latest downloader, uh, the latest installer, and you'll automatically be up to date. Okay. Any other any other questions? No. Okay. Well, um, looks like we're a little ahead of schedule, but that's good. I can. Carry on with the um, the uh, report control and get it a bit more done. I've got a, a, a an install to do at six pm, which is forty five minutes. So I'll get forty five minutes on it before we um, before I have to update a client. So thank you very thank you very much everyone for attending. Uh, hopefully it was a, a good webinar. It's a good turnout. It's good to see the numbers are growing, uh, which means you you must be uh, using them. That's good. <laughs> uh, until next week, I shall see you then. Thanks for the FTP stuff. Oh, you, you haven't got it yet, but it, it is, as you can see, they are there. Um, I, I like to prove yeah, no, that they are. I, so, no, um, I appreciate it. Yeah, you will get them very, very soon. Uh, right. Tidy up on the on the source code and so on, and, uh, and a, a rough and ready example um, to the chill cat. But you know, if you say, that's great, Andy, how do I accomplish such, such thing? I'll add it to the example app and just send you over another example. So we'll build the examples that way via user feedback. That's Usually yeah. No rush. No rush. I'm in the middle of slaying a bunch of dragons over here. Anyway, <laughs> I know that feeling. <laughs> okay. Well, brilliant. Thank you, everyone, and uh, I'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.